fundamentally, what was at the heart of what happened to me was a betrayal. That was the, the, the most difficult thing to deal with, was the fact that a best friend had betrayed me and sold my story to a newspaper. Well, being a Blue Peter presenter meant an awful lot to me at the time. It's tremendously exciting. It really was. When they told me I got the job, it, it was um, so rich, strange. I remember ringing my mum and she screamed and I think she then rang my dad and he screamed. It was one of those moments. You know, to me as a 20 year old, 21 year old, it was like, I don't know, winning the X Factor or something. I'm ready for my conquer challenge. I'm ready to, to the go. Start, Do we please? go to the start? Yeah, okay. the start. Off you go. Okay. Good look, and, and here to ensure that uh, fair play is, is, is seen at all times is uh, Miss Hannigan Oi, herself. Um, Get out. Right, okay. My sacking from Blue Peter coincided with the, uh, the 40th anniversary of the show, which was taking place at the Natural History Museum. And when I came outside, there were lots of photographers there waiting for me. And there were lots of other presenters there who were much better known than I was, but the photographers only focused on me. And so alarm bells started to ring. That's unnatural. And so I rang my agent first thing the next morning and he said, right, something's up here. Uh, that weekend, I'd long had planned a bit of a paint and decoration job on my flat. So my dad and I went to home base. Just picking some paint for the flat. Um, if memory serves, it was a midnight mist. And I was holding this kind of paint, about to pay for it. And the phone went and it was my PR guy. And he said, Richard, it's news of the world, cocaine and lots of it. Um, and as you can imagine, that's a pretty tough line to hear with my dad next to me. Um, and it, by, by lots of it, he actually meant, that sounds like he meant lots of cocaine, he meant lots of coverage, which he was quite right about. And I said, look, Dad, there's going to be a story about me in the news of the world tomorrow. And it's about me taking um, an illegal drug. And he said, right. I look very serious. And, um, and I said, and I, you know, I think it will probably have an impact on my job. I knew in that instant I was going to lose my job on Blue Peter. That it's, that's untenable. You can't carry on as a Blue Peter presenter. Of all shows, even compared to other kids shows, you can't carry on if you've taken a drug like that. The head of children's programmes at the BBC went on television today to tell young Blue Peter viewers why Richard Bacon wouldn't be presenting the programme anymore. She said Bacon, who was sacked yesterday for taking cocaine, had let them all down badly. The genesis of the story involved my best friend at the time going to Max Clifford and then to the, he went to the News of the World and they recorded a phone conversation where my friend rang me up and he'd been on this night out with me where we'd taken cocaine and he rang me and rehearsed the details of it and said, hey Richard, that was a big night. And I kind of went, yeah, of course, yeah, we had so much coke. And that became the, the evidence that they used. When those photographers started following me before I knew what the story was, I was scared. Then when I had it confirmed that I was going to be in the news of the world and the subject of this scandal, um, I was really scared. And then, of course, I had to tell my parents. So you go from fear to a certain shame and apprehension. In fact, if you like, all three of those mixed together. Inside my head, I think I managed to uh, keep a sense of realism about what was happening. And it was a bit silly what was happening. And I knew that I was the subject of some stories that weren't true and that that would happen. One of the frustrating things about the experience that I had, which is that something bad happened that everyone was talking about and it kind of, there's nothing you can do about it and you can't stop everyone else talking about it and columnists writing about it and you just, all you can do is sort of let it happen. And then when it's calmed down, you then try and find a way back how can I how can I rebuild you can feel completely defeated by something and if you feel completely defeated by something then you might give up or you can say this has happened but what can I do to repair the damage and that was a view that I took streaky bacon streaky bacon yes after three months I got a job on the big breakfast doing their outside broadcasts which was traveling the country and knocking on people's doors and doing stunts and sketches and I w you wouldn't recommend this uh, to anyone on Blue Peter right now because what I did was, was dangerous and, um, uh, and embarrassing. But there's also another reality to it, which is that it did help me get other work. Without that scandal, then The Big Breakfast wouldn't have been interested in me. They were interested in me even three months later. Letting down your parents badly to, to, to really fundamentally pull that rug away and disappoint them and, and, and embarrass them was the hardest thing of all. Much harder than losing my job, much harder than losing my income, much harder than the, the ridicule that followed from the columnists in the newspapers. It, it, was, it was what um, 
uh, it was the, the damage that I'd done to them and the impact that I knew it would have on them personally and on their lives. Failure can be a positive thing because of what you learn out of adverse circumstances. And uh, I would, I'd had quite a charmed life up till, up till then. And actually something terrible, something bad happening to me, um, made me, it knocked away my naive edge, if you like, and it gave me a cynicism. The, I suppose the danger is when something weird, and it is weird like that happens, is that it fundamentally changes you and your approach to people and friends. And I'm glad to say it didn't. And I think in some ways you have to be realistic. You have to know that actually um, most people aren't like that. Um, and so I, it didn't fundamentally affect my relationships with other people or how much I trust other people. It just made me ask a couple more questions that made me a bit more cautious. Then it's one thing saying this, another thing doing it. But you, you really have to try and stand back from the situation. It's the only way to get a realistic perspective on it. Don't panic. Um, don't listen to the most pessimistic voices. Because when you're in the moment, you'll react emotionally to something. You just need to somehow find a way of almost stepping out of a situation, looking at it in the third person and observing it. And if you can do that with a calm, cool, rational head, even in the eye of the storm, then you'll probably find a way out. But it's easier said, you know, it's easier said than done. Um, but situations, um, situations are rarely as good as they seem and, and rarely as bad as they seem.